Yo, what up? It's your boy, Black Gritty. Welcome to an episode of Gritty Nights. Uh, you can already see I got the OG with me. What's up, OG? What's up? What's up, bro? Uh, OG came through the studio, got his son in the house, uh, chilling, educating, learning stuff, finding out what's going on in the world. Y- y- your kid looks like a good kid, OG. You doing all right? Man, I, I, it's hard work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. Well, we, we, we're in the same boat. He's 17. My daughter's 16. So yeah. I know I know exactly the kind of work you're talking about, OG. I know exactly the kind of work you're talking about. Uh, training camp's in. Training camp started. Uh, I'm just hoping for good health, OG. That's all I want right now. I don't care about none of the other stuff. I know Elliot goes out and, and puts out all the stats and everything, man. But... <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I don't really care about that. I, I we we fiend so much for football, and then when it comes, everybody mad at Elliot for saying, Well, he had five sacks and he looked dominant. I'm like, dude, they got t-shirts on. <laughs> How are they dominant? You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a weird thing. Like, I want content and everything else, but I, I don't get mad at Elliot about it like a lot of people do. I know he's doing what he does, but it is exciting to training hands back in. Yeah, I think it. It adds a little excitement to what he does. I mean, Elias is a he's original, I would say. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think he wants to make his his mark, but uh, he do a good job. Yeah, he he reminds me of you in one way. He stick to his guns, boy. When you when you say t- when you say something like we was battling about COVID, when you when you know something, you know something. When when uh, uh, Flip Flops knows something, he knows it. You can't nobody tell him nothing. He he believes with his whole heart. Which you know that that is a good thing having conviction for certain things. Uh, he he only flip flops later once the data absolutely changes, not in his favor, and then he he has to backtrack a little bit. He forgets what he said in the beginning of the season. But uh, Elliot is a part of uh, OG Wade's uh, knowledge without college school of thought. Yeah, and he's literally under my tutelage. Right now. <laughs> he, he, he needs all the tutelage and, and information he can get, and that's why he charts everything down like he does. Uh, side note: What I was just saying about injury is uh, I don't know if you saw Joe Burrow got hurt today in uh, practice, and you know I, I I don't wish ill will on nobody injury wise, especially like one of the young guns coming up, but that just scares the mess out of me. I'm like, what are you doing out there? And and you know you can get hurt on any place. That's why I just want the Eagles to go out. It's, it's 98 degrees today. Like you in t-shirt and shorts, walk through, do what you need to do to get me to preseason and the regular season healthy. I I heard about it coming in. Uh Eichenum was talking about it on the radio. Um, I don't know the extent of the injury. They yeah. say it was a calf strain, but I can tell you this here. Teams don't want to let you know too much. And mm-hmm. if they carted him off. It's more than a calf strain. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I I did see the video where they like uh, he had two obviously two player a player on each side of him and he was like limping off and putting no pressure on it and they brought that card out really quick. So you know hopefully yeah you know, I mean it is what it is for him and and the Bengals like I said I just want to keep healthy around here. Last year we had a great off season of health wise and going into the regular season pretty much healthy all the way till the end of the year. And uh, that's just the way I want to keep it going. Just keep the health going and uh, get me to the regular season, like especially with all these young players coming in and see where we go from there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult when you're dealing with injuries and stuff like that. Um, that's why w- I don't really criticize Nick Sirianni the way that he runs his practices and try to minimize as much contact and as much wear and tear that these guys put on their bodies. Um, There's things that people that never played the game that don't know about um, practice and wear and tear on your body during these times. Um, Slay spoke about it, I believe, in one of his interviews when he talked about how he don't like to cut if he don't have to when he's working out. Yeah. And that's to save his Achilles and stuff like that. And that's that's, that's real true, you know. So you really got to condition yourself in the off season. And then as you come in back into the season, you got to condition yourself to ease your way in it. And that's what, one of the things that people um, criticized uh, Jalen about last year when he was um, in training camp and he was running, he get flushed out of the pocket, but then he'll run and people say, well, why is he running so much? It's because he's trying to keep his mind and his body in the same frame of what he would do in a game. If you practice one way 
and then in a game you play another way. It doesn't translate. No. Again, stuff like that is where, <clears throat> you know, one thing I agree with you so much about is sometimes people talk about stuff because they just want to talk about it. And if you if you don't play sports or have been in sports or been an athlete or been around enough athletes, you don't understand certain things. You 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 practice how you play. You know what I mean? Like that's why everybody you talk about practice, you talk about practice. That's why it's one of the biggest things that we're gonna die one day, and they're still gonna be quoting Alan Iverson about practice because it is important to a certain extent, unless you are the, a supreme talent like Alan Iverson, you can kind of get away with it. But even the Kobe's and the Jordans and the LeBrons, everybody else takes practice very seriously. They go over the heart. Tim Duncan, like they they show up. That's why I do big fundamentals. So you practice how you play, and he can't just turn it on and off unless he has some kind of injury. You saw how much it it hurt Patrick Mahomes getting injured in the playoffs where he couldn't run. You could see where he wanted to run. Your body can't stop doing it once you're doing it. You know what I mean? So, But th the injury made him stop. But you have to practice how you play. You have to get in the rhythm and get in the flow because otherwise, you know, the NFL speed is too fast. Mm -hmm. NFL speed is too fast. Uh, did you hear what uh, Jalen Carter said uh, in the interview? Man, uh, talk about a rookie mistake. I, I don't have the audio because, like I said, I, OG just stopped by. We're just chopping it up. So, But he was talking about, you know, Super Bowl or bust. We got to do it. You know, uh, I hope we don't get bored. I hope the games are hard because I don't want to get too bored. He was saying all the things that every pro is like, yo, yo, what are you doing? And whoever the interviewer was, <laughs> shout out to him because he sounded like a young dude. I don't, I don't want to not say he's not a professional, but he doesn't sound like your rap reports or anything like that. It just sounded like a kid. A younger kid talking to him, he got comfortable and started going off. You know, what I mean, it, it almost hit dream team level <laughs> of conversation. So I, I think he got caught out there. I think he was at an, an event and there was just this kid because it doesn't sound like the kid have, you know, like like you just said, yeah. it's not, doesn't sound like he just had his phone recording. Yeah, and I, I don't want to disrespect because I don't know who it was. Right. So I don't want to say, you know. And so to me, while as a fan, you kind of liked hearing that, but to me as a ex football player and as a fan, I don't want to hear that, that kind of bravado, you know, yeah. now if he played this year and he played at a high level, the next year when someone put that mic in your face and, and talk to you, then you can do that. Yeah. But right now you haven't played one down in the league yet. No, like, you know, and, and it's exactly what you said. It got me to the point where I was like, he said, F Dallas and this. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You ain't even played Dallas yet. <laughs> Let me be real. That. Like, he almost got me, OG. I was like, yeah, he talking that talk. And I'm like, wait a second. You ain't played one down in the NFL yet, brother. Let me just pump the brakes just a little bit. But now, now he got a show and tell. Yes. You put your mouth on it. Yeah. You he know, so when I, when I, when we drafted Jalen Carter, or even before when we, we, we drafted him, I was doing a little research on him. So when I do that, I like to go back and try to get to know who the player is and then who the person is. Like, what what do they act like when they're not in uniform or when they're preparing? So what I went to is I went to a couple of uh, videos of Georgia in their pregame, you know, like when you're just walking around and stretching and everything. And I seen him getting into it with, other, with the other team's players. And I, I just seen the dog in him and I seen how I wanted to see how he was, how he would act towards another player that's barking at him. All that stuff matters. And then you go to the actual game and see how he played in that game. Yeah. So if he played in that game and it looked like he was a little timid in that game, then that means that he was intimidated at in the moments. And when people do the talking before the game, yeah, they kind of do it to try to scare you off. But then when the game comes on, you don't see that same energy. But he he holds up the energy. So I can honestly tell you that that's what I've seen with them. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about all, all the young kids. I'm just uh my only cautious optimization is hitting the rookie wall at some point uh for all of them. Uh and hopefully it comes in separate waves. You know what I mean? Like somebody's gonna have a bad game, a bad week, a bad two weeks. And then another one will have a bad game, bad game, two weeks, and it just should hopefully offset each other because there there are a lot of young guys that are in prime positions. But uh, I, I'm just excited about it across the board. In terms of hitting a rookie wall, when you see players like that, and and that's why I'm so glad that we have the 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 backups and we have the I would say the rotation um, the rotation that we have. 
that comes when you're out there a lot. Mm -hmm. So there's a give and take, you know what I'm saying? So in that manner there, I don't think that Jalen will get enough time to really hit a rookie wall. Yeah. Oh, and I, and I meant all, and I meant all of them too, not just Jalen, you know, uh, Sidney Brown, everybody, but to your point there, there, the Eagles are, are loaded in, backup mm-hmm. positions and things like that. So people will swap out because that's usually how the defenses are anymore anyway. The other thing I just thought to myself as I'm talking against myself, <laughs> there they are also a lot of the guys from Georgia who played extra games, played in big moments, played in big spots. Uh, so they, they had a little bit more tail end of football than your regular, you know, player per se. Uh, so there, there is something to that championship legacy also. So hopefully – like you said, between the rotation and their pedigree, they don't hit. They don't hit that much of a wall. But every rookie hits one. Every, you know, something happened. They got a new baby mama on the way. Somebody <laughs> didn't get their car. You know what I mean? Like you know, mm-hmm. something's gonna happen in their personal life. But yeah, like you said, the rotation should uh, help them with that. Uh, I know something that the people want to know about for OG. What do you feel about the running back position? It seems like it, we better be real careful because it's gonna be like the fullback. I feel like what's about to start happening to the running back, even though we need running backs in the game. What do you think about the the, the situation where they're not nobody's wanting to pay for that position anymore? They just want to run guys into the ground. Um, I, I kind of understand the business part of it. I think that the problem that we're having large and large is that most of the players don't understand how to separate the business from the player, and the running backs is upset that they not getting the money, whatever, but they got to understand that the owners, what they did is they had to reset the market for that position. Okay. And it wasn't like they, they, they pick the positions that they want to reset the market in annually. Okay. It's, and it, it may go two years or three years, but with the quarterbacks demanding so much more guaranteed money now, they had, someone had to, that money had to, be taken from somewhere if you know it or not the owners are in the business to make money they're investing billions of dollars okay the players ain't investing nothing but their talents yeah and i don't think that the players know how to separate the the two they think that they're supposed to get paid well and be this and be no you get paid what the owners market have you at, at getting paid you know so while it could be seen as unfair, business is not fair. When you're making money, there's no unfair or fair. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. just how is the company going to make profit? The NFL is a business. And in that business, just like you have the United States, that's all of the states that comes and unite. Well, the NFL is all of the teams that come and unite. Okay? That's their bottom dollar. So they're never, ever going to lose money. The owners are never, ever going to lose, ain't supposed to lose money. Now, if you're listening on audio, I'm about to talk to this real quick. Let's see what your dad just said. He said all kinds of stuff that made sense, and everything he said was right. Now, let me tell you something, OG. You can't be running me into the ground for four years straight on the league minimum, and then you shuffle me off into these streets with no money when I'm trying to resign. And then you franchise tag me twice. It's slave labor when you need me out here. Guess what? They need to stop signing these rookie deals. They need to sign on two-year deals and guarantee get some money. Matter of fact, bring me back to the old days when they used to give quarterbacks $100 million when they ain't proved nothing yet. Ryan Leaf contract got $100 million, ain't did nothing. If I'm a running back, I want that. Give me my $60 million up front because because you're going to work me like a dog and then let me go. And then somebody's going to pay me $800,000, $1.2 million with my knees bad and my back's broke. And I'm out here running, breaking tackles. You need me and they need to get their money. OG. I feel so. I would, I would never tell my, I don't have a son. I would never tell my son, nephew, niece, nobody <laughs> to be a running back. You'd be a quarterback, a slot receipt, anything but running back right now, because you're, Everything you said is 100% right. There, there is a business to it. And unless your quarterback's willing to do now what Aaron Rodgers finally has learned to do, it took him, what, 38 years old to say, you know what, let me take a $35 million pay cut so you could keep some town around me and have these guys be here because they do have a nice running back over there. They do have a nice cornerback. They do have a nice defense. And somebody's got to give. And I understand that the quarterback's got to get their money but maybe we need to raise the cap a little bit then or something. But again, the owners aren't trying to do that. 
and they're 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 you everything you said is 100 right but the way i feel og especially since all the running backs except for mccaffrey happen to have a tan i feel a certain way about the position because i used to love a fullback and now we ain't got that no more what would the game look like without running backs og what would it look like um the game would survive it, it um it basically if you look at the game right now and with certain teams such as kansas city mm. they could play without a running back yeah well you see what i'm saying yeah cause uh, um, because um andy reed never really he's a screen machine anyway right westbrook was such a hybrid <laughs> mm-hmm. of catching out of the backfield catching in the slot so i get what you're saying don't don't make more sense i'm upset don't be coming back i just i just looked at your son in the eyes and told him Look, I'm t- I'm right, even though you're right, because I I I just I hate the fact that I gotta like sit here because we don't I ain't gotta worry about that. Our GM has done a great job of meal piecing running backs together, and when you have an elite offensive line, you can do that because as unfair as it seems, you could put anybody back there and they can go get me three yards. I mean, they're getting four yards without getting touched. So I personally, on our team, don't have to worry about that. But looking around the league. It does. I don't know what it is about it. It, it just bothers me and it, and it makes me upset because everybody else, like you said, is allocated their money. These wide receiver divas want the money, the hundred million dollar contracts. And I mean, the running back, he just wanted twelve million dollars. It's not like he wanted 50. I know nobody's getting that Zeke deal because that was dumb because they're the Cowboys. Nobody's getting ninety five million dollars anymore. But man, I can't get twelve a year. I can't, I can't get you know, what I mean, like that. So. Like I said, everything you said was absolutely correct, uh, but I don't like it. Well, the market reset. I mean, but the thing is, um, and it's not just the running back position. The market also reset at the cor- at the cornerback and um, safety position. Okay, remember they were making twenty million a year. Now that reset, and that's why we were able to bring Slay back and bring yeah. get Bradbury on a on a team friendly deal because it all started with the quarterback. Yeah, when Deshaun Jackson, I mean uh, Watson, took that or deal, got a deal from Cleveland. Cleveland messed the whole game up. And and not to cut you off, you know what the worst part about that deal is to what you're saying. What a lot of people don't know, so I like to inform people. You know, knowledge about college, we in these streets, uh, is tell them that the reason that deal was so problematic and why no one wanted to follow it. When you guarantee two hundred thirty five million dollars, the owner has to put two hundred thirty five million dollars in escrow to guarantee your payment. So he's got to come out of his pocket 200 plus million dollars plus all the other guaranteed money of the other 53 players on the team as opposed to Jalen Hurts getting a 260 million dollar deal, 180 or 160 whatever it is guaranteed, it's got to be an escrow. That's a 40 million dollar, 70 million dollar leeway which would cover a lot of the other team for us having their guaranteed money in escrow. And I don't care how much money you think you got. If I'm going to take up uh, 10% of your money and just lock it up somewhere, all at one lump sum, when you know as a rich person or anybody with money, I could do some stuff with that little bit of money. I could flip that. I could, you know what I mean, make a little extra. So that's what you're talking about as a problem for ownership and, and those kind of deals. Well, let me help you out here. Um, because I know, and I'm let's be full disclosure, I am not giving financial advice. Yeah. Okay. The escrow thing is a um, a bunny rabbit trick. Okay. Escrow, that word escrow is used just basically to manipulate the minds of the people who don't know. That money goes into escrow account. Who you think controls that money? Well. They still got control of that money. Well, yeah. And it's not really the owners that's doing it. Again, it's the NFL. This yeah. is the way we're going to say we're doing and what we have to do so that we can justify making all this money. Yeah. So they say, well, the owners, they have to put a certain amount into escrow. They still get to use it. Oh, yeah. But they still get to use the credit that's there. Let, let them show up without that money, OG, and yeah. see what happens. Uh, so, <laughs> just just like how uh, not, not it's not the same thing, but just like how Michael Jordan just got swindled out of his own team gambling with his buddy, investing money in something that he didn't have, and then they pulled back on him, and then they swanked him out of his ownership, which it's a story for another day. But, like, just because you're the owner and you got that money, there is something to it where even the person can get swindled when you don't understand money. And Jordan's always been a bad gambler. He did not understand. Sure, he need to go talk to you for some non-financial advice, <laughs> and, he, and he would be a little bit better off. All right, uh, I'm going to get you out of here because – 
I, I got stuff to do. I know you got stuff to do. But before you leave, um, uh, give me give me your top five uh, quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts, number one, the Duke. Um. Oh, let me before I say this. Do you want the top five quarterbacks, or do you want who's going to be a top five quarterback after this year? Let's let's do this year. Everybody everybody got their thing. Let's let's talk about this year. Who's going to be top five this year? Okay. It was going to be Jalen Hurts, number one. Number two is going to be um, Jared Goff. Number three is going to be Patrick Mahomes. Number four is going to be Joe Burrow. And number five is going to be Deshaun Watson. I'm going to give you a caveat on Burrow. Give me one more in case Burrow's out. Uh, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. All right. So I'm going to say... This is for this year. Don't say nothing. Shut your mouth. This is for this year. This year is going to go Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, because I think Jalen Hurts is going to win MVP this year. I think with the quote-unquote tougher schedule and the show that he's going to put on, he's going to earn his MVP, which will put him at number one for this season. Patrick Mahomes, I'm going to take Justin Herbert. I'm doing this in the caveat that uh, Burrow might be out. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a resurgence with that defense. It's going to help him out tremendously, and everybody's going to be faked into thinking he's Aaron Rodgers again when really they were winning with Mike White last year. So if you give me anything better than Mike White and Wilson, they're going to look so dominant. So Aaron Rodgers, number four. And I'm going to follow you up with the Lions quarterback because I do have money and belief in the Lions. I do think with, again, the NFC being weaker, uh, as a whole, he in that system, people I saw when you put the list out, people laughed at you because you, you do still have him high, that's really high. But I'm still gonna put him at five because the numbers he was putting up, the passing yards, the touchdowns, the no interceptions, they were losing games because of dumb football. They were losing by three, two, and one, not because the quarterback was messing up, because a wide receiver dropped the ball, because somebody fumbled the ball, because there were penalties on defense. The quarterback did his job, and he was a, a top, he was a number one overall pick. So I I do follow your mindset on um I forget even his name. I just keep calling him Lions quarterback. Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Do me Christmas. I do believe Jared Goff is going to be. He's my five, so he's in my top five. Also, uh, an another fire question to get people mad. Give me, give me your top five in basketball. All time. All time. Kobe Bryant number one. Michael Jordan number two. Uh, I want to go with Tim Duncan, number three, Shaquille O'Neal, number four. And I would say Kyrie Irving at number five. You lucky your son is here because I will beat you down like a dog. You, oh, you lucky your son sitting down. I ain't going to do it in front of your child, OG. What are you talking about? Okay, okay. So we're we going to have another episode one day where it's all just that. Uh, mine, mine all time is uh lebron james the king of all kings uh J J james <laughs> then i'm gonna go michael jordan then i'm gonna go tim duncan and then i'm gonna go kobe and and and, and after that i want to put uh kareem on there because kareem don't get enough of what uh love that he should get and in my mythical ethos will chamberlain is the greatest basketball player to ever live like <laughs> That's that's all my dad and uncles ever told me. So I, they told me this dude was jumping over backboards doing kung fu kicks. So I just I just believe everything they told me. The LeBron James thing to me is real funny because I really can't like it. It's not to me. It it's not real. Like you won in a bubble. That's, that's not real. Then you go to a team to win a championship because you teamed up with someone. To me, I don't like that. I mean, it's just to me, it's just too much hocus smoky stuff they, with they, him. They they brought Shaq from Penny, and then they got him a new Penny, which was Kobe, and which now they're the other team. And uh, I mean, unproven. I mean, uh, unproven, but yeah. he was the phenom pick of the thing. It's just like looking at LeBron James at eighteen. You, you look at certain guys, you're like, 
oh, okay, he, he's going to be it. KG went out there to Boston to do what he needed to do. They had to get Magic out here with Cream to get his second run back in. So, I mean, it's, it's the super team thing. And, and as far as the bubble's concerned, the bubble is the purest basketball around. You didn't have no side chicks, no baby mamas. Yeah, you All you could do was focus Jimmy. on basketball. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one dude got caught. He did get busted sneaking the girls. And, uh, and, uh, so, oh, sweet Jimmy. Yeah, that's what, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it's, it, that was the most purest basketball. That, that's just out there on the street. And, and he got his jersey and he won with three teams. And you know what else, too? I will say this because my favorite thing when not, not uh, uh, for Kobe, but with Jordan, everybody's like, he owned a basketball team. He sells more shoes than anybody else. If if you want to bring out the outside world, then LeBron James is the greatest athlete that ever lived. He is the, for a guy who didn't go to college. Getting some knowledge, knowledge to build what he's built. Uh, OG, let me just, I mean, because I, I, like I said, we're going to argue about this later, but I'm going to tell you right now. As a human being, the dude opened up a school. Now he just opened up housing for the parents at the school. Then he's going to give them jobs. The kids all go to college for free. He owns a media team that's basically going to do what Jordan did, have a campaign when he retires to give him every kind of inch he wants. Then he opened up a sports agency. He's repping half the team. This dude became the NBA. A fatherless 18-year-old dude from Akron, Ohio, is running everything. So uh, as a whole, I just love LeBron James. Yeah. And I know how much you love Kobe. So one day, we're going to sit down. We're going to duke it out. I'm going to get some gloves in here. And we're going to have to. It's real easy. It's not going to be a fair fight. Uh, look. Basically, all I do, I go to skills. I don't talk to numbers. And nope. we all counting championships. <laughs> yep. And But I'm, I'm before we go, let me say this here. And people, I wish we could get Kyrie Irving with the Sixers. But I'm going to be honest with you. If people go and look at Kyrie Irving's tape, this kid is probably the one, I mean, I'm, unbelievable player. So when you, when you said that, when, was when we were arguing on, on Twitter about a uh, skilled basketball player, I didn't even want to bring it up because it was outside the ethos because we're talking about the greatest of all time. I personally think the same way to like my, my dad and stuff telling me about what Wilt could do, I look at Kyrie Irving on the basketball court with a ball in his hand there is nothing that he can't do. Left, right, back, front, side to side, speed, tempo. There is nothing he can't do with a basketball. And that's where I talk about the outside world. If the outside world wasn't in his mind sometimes and got him, whatever, when he's at his apex, he is a predator. He is a he is the king of a basketball. Like if you ever wanted to model a player, when you talk about Kobe, I instantly thought to myself, I was like, Kyrie Irving is the best basketball skill, skill I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Like he he's he's Kobe and LeBron with Allen Iverson, like and Magic Johnson all yeah. had a all baby. Yeah. And he if he just if he had more, I don't want to say more because he's he's a social conscious guy. He's got his own mindset, and I think that has gotten in his way of his game. But when he's playing, he's pure basketball. I I had a hard time figuring out if he was a righty or a lefty. He's strong with both hands equally. I mean, it's this dude, man. I'm telling you, yeah. Philly would love him. It, it, it would, and again, that's what him. people like. They didn't want him, and I'm like, sure. from a basketball standpoint, he can go full speed, full tilt, right handed or left handed, and he can even do it in the same motion. He could come at you with the right and then finish with the left, right in your face, mm -hmm. constantly. Consistently, and he can do the exact same thing. Oh, you want to bar me? So I'm gonna go left on you because you can't guard from my left. And you see him playing with people. You see him mentally just like, oh, you want to do that? Okay, boom. And and to the best players, to the CP3s, to the yeah. uh, Wardell Curries, everybody you want to put on your top list to do whatever. Dame Lillard, he puts them in a spin cycle hmm. anytime he wants to, when he wants to. You know, so you're, you're right about that. His, his, that's. When you said Kobe Bryant's skill level to me, like I, in my mind, Kyrie Irving has the best basketball skill I, I've ever yeah. seen in my lifetime. Yeah. I think if, if people just kind of, I think we get too far into people's personal businesses. Um, these guys are basketball players. They're athletes. Yep. So no one said they was the brightest. No one said they was the smartest. No one said they knew it all. This man is a free thinker. He's searching just like we are. Yep. He's no no worse and no better than us, you know. And he has never hurt anybody. No. Never been arrested. No. Never ain't into drugs. Nope. So I heard Howard. I heard Howard asking 
says he was a scum of the earth. I'm like, <clears throat> man, I wanted to call up there so bad, and I'm glad that I was I didn't. Yeah, you know, because I had a few things, but you don't you don't say that about someone. No, else. and and again, like, and that's one of the things to to speak on that. That's one of the things where, like, even when you hear me calling in, like. I'll call Brett Clown, Brett Clown, or you know, the clan of clowns. Or I try to when I'm when I'm insulting someone, I try to make a joke about it because I know that they're people. I know that um Brett is a is a good human being and a good man. So I don't want to disparage him or he's just a, a, a cussing him out or whatever. But like sometimes people like that, and Howard is a homer, he he gets wound up in his own mindset of things, but stuff like that does irk me because I'm like, to a man, you don't know what's going on. And again, you ain't perfect. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people out here in the street that have met Howard and don't like him. But mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like when they tell me certain things, like, whoa, whoa, you know, calm it down. Like, you don't know. You might have caught him on a bad day, you know, because that's the other thing, too. Everybody's got a bad day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I, yeah. I met Howard at the station. Uh, cool dude, you know, but like I'm, I'm sure is I didn't say some stuff that you know, ruffle people feathers. I'm sure I did. Yeah. You know, and done some stuff. But that day there when he said that was. Uh, very upset and disappointing for me for someone you know like that to be saying that about another person yeah you know and f especially when this man hasn't hurt anybody yeah you know he's making his own choices and again he hasn't hurt anybody there, there's murderers getting second chances yeah and sports leagues and, and have you know, done and hurt so. people and you know domestic violence all that other kind of stuff so you, you're absolutely right uh last thing i'm gonna say uh Check OG Wade out on Twitter. I'm trying to keep him there. But let me just remind any regular person that's on Twitter when we talk about sports. First of all, it's sports banter. We're, we're joking. I, I feel the way I feel. He feels the way he feels. I'm right until I'm proven wrong or until I want to believe I'm wrong. It, it, it's barbershop talk. It is personal mental sports delusion. And it's all in fun and games. So when you want to take it personally, and, and again, a, a coming at anyone saying certain things. Like I saw somebody take what he said out of context and then bring up the Lord. Whenever you bring up the Lord, it just takes me out of the whole conversation. Cause I'm like, that's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about this or that. Like, you know, like I said, we were uh, uh, three hours talking about Kobe Bryant ain't the greatest. You know what I'm saying? And neither one of us had to talk down about each other. Cause we're talking about the game. You know what I'm saying? I might've drugged Tim Duncan and I reached into it, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> That's about as far as it needed to go. So just just be careful out there and know that one OG's a, a young Twitterer, and two this man doesn't have malice in his heart. So when he's tweeting something, don't put extra words into it, right? <laughs> like yeah. you, you're just saying don't what you say saying. It. Don't say essentially what you said. Yeah. No, no, don't no, say essentially. No. Say what the yeah. hell OG yeah. said. Yeah, just take 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 it take it literally until he's got a. a, a a gif in there, an emoji. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he old man. He done found out. You teach your dad about the, the gifts. Yeah. Oh, his, his son done talking about the gifts. Now he's out here like this. <laughs> he out here doing it. If you're on the audio, just go check him out on Twitter. You'll see it. Uh, I appreciate you taking some time, with OG. And uh, when we get you set up uh, back home, we'll, we'll do it again and rap and talk about some all stuff. All right, all right. Appreciate you. Uh, you too, bro.